All right. Have we got Mr. Knowles? There he is. Hey. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> All right. Seems like you and I were just smoking a cigar two days ago. That does. <laughs> I was I was kind of hoping, because I so rarely get good uh, segment assignments, yeah. I was kind of hoping I could get to go over to London and Scotland and ride on the baby Trump blimp and all of that. But <laughs> unfortunately, I had to watch it from afar. If you had sat on that baby Trump blimp, it would have fallen like a rock. No. The thing was like this, this thing was smaller than a Prius. It was this, <laughs> I couldn't believe they made such a fuss over that. You know, that was that cigar was the last t- moment I had off all weekend because I've been working so hard getting the second season of Another Kingdom ready for you to read. So I just want you to know you that know, you uh, will Drew, be reading good stuff. I'm really grateful and I'm really glad to hear that because that cigar <laughs> was the last cigar I had before I had another one on the drive home <laughs> and then a couple martinis on Saturday outside by the pool. And, well, yeah, I, I'm glad we both spent our weekends doing good work. Uh, I'm pretty excited for this new season of Another Kingdom. It's, it's, I'm, I'm really happy with the way it came out and I think it's I think it's going to be really good and the Daily Wire is doing it this time so it's going to have a lot of uh, in, you know it's going to have the God King himself behind it. He's so. going to be using all of his powers. I also really appreciate it because as you might know uh, I don't I don't work a lot in this town anymore you know and <laughs> at this point I believe the only acting roles I get are from you and Ted Cruz. Those are the main <laughs> channels so I really hope we're going to put all of every ounce of acting training I ever had is going into the second season of Another Kingdom and I hope people like it. I think the first one did pretty well, so I'm hoping this one you know, does too. I, I think with the audience's help and with Jeremy's intelligence behind this thing, I think we could make this into something, uh, you know, w- w- which you might actually be, pr- be the first thing in your life besides getting married, you could actually be proud of. That's right. <laughs> I, I'd like to count the book as something, the blank book as something blank. I'm proud of, but I didn't do anything, so it doesn't, doesn't work. Um, you know, we've been talking about the noise, and there was so much noise. Basically, Donald Trump did a good job in Europe. I mean, I, he came, he demanded more NATO spending. He seems to have gotten commitment for nor- more NATO spending. He schooled the uh, the English on what they should be doing about Brexit, but aren't. But nothing, he got nothing but protests. And what are they protesting? They, the Europeans in the, the United Kingdom, I guess the former Europeans in the UK, yeah, yeah. but in for all the way from the UK to Finland, uh, the, the foreigners who were protesting our president and our government were proving Trump right. They were proving the entire point. President Trump said these people are ungrateful. We're protecting them. We're paying the, uh, an, a huge lion's share of their defense budget, and they're not grateful for it. They're cozying up to other people, and they don't give us any respect on the world stage. They don't give us respect on trade. They don't give us respect anywhere. And what happened? He pulled up, and he got no respect. No respect, <laughs> I tell you, like Rodney Dangerfield. There's even some physical resemblance. The, the I mean, that is the main takeaway right now, just on the defense point, just on the no respect. Right now, the United States pays 12 and a half times as much as the United Kingdom (laughs) and 71% more as a percentage of GDP. Even even that, because obviously UK is a smaller GDP. Yeah. For, that's for defense. That's for defense. We're paying so much more, over 12 times more. And by the way, the UK is the number two contributor to NATO. They're the they're the second biggest that's, one. Yeah. We're still paying almost 13 times more. And then they brag about their social spending, which they can only do because we're paying for it, essentially. Exactly, because yeah. Daddy, Daddy Trump <laughs> is being very nice to them. Yeah. Uncle Sam, all the way through Daddy Trump, is being very nice. Uh, also, the other thing about the protests is to see that uh, the American left has common cause with our apparent foes abroad. You know, the the tenor of the protests was so grotesque and so lame. I mean, it was that, you know, that all they do, they can't protest any actual policy. So they just make a, a big Trump baby wearing a diaper and they use profanity. There was a great side by side of the lefty protesters who were like stripping naked and had rainbow glitter on their eyes and were throwing blood on the wall or whatever. And then the, the pro-Trump protesters there were saying, hey, uh, they were all like dressed well and buttoned down shirts. They parted their hair and it said, you know, free that journalist that the UK uh, locked up for for, uh, for covering a court case. Tommy Robinson. (laughs) They were all focused on issues. They said, welcome Donald Trump, because that's how adults behave, and these screaming children do not. I have to play a cut for you. I just have to play a cut of a a protester being asked why he is protesting. It's cut number seven. (laughs) Have we got this? Can we play it? So we're sort of like, you know, we just need to come out, basically. You know, we're completely against uh, Donald Trump. um, What is it that you're against Donald Trump for? Well, you know, I don't think you can sort of live in a world where a sort of a bully you know, is the sort of person that sort of is the kind of person that's going to win. And I think that sort of like for all the sort of other things that are going on, this sort of like culture where basically, uh, you know, if you can sort of like kind of uh, put people down and sort of like be the sort of, you know, the big person who sort of essentially, you know, um, uses negative sort of uh, methods to sort of put people down. I can't, I can't agree with that. 
No, he has no clue. Why was that Alexandria Ocasio Cortez? <laughs> I couldn't make it. I couldn't see on the screen. <laughs> you know, it's funny because that actually makes a great point. That image, which is he says, "Oh, you know, he's a bully, and he sa- he wants to win, and he says loser, and this and that." And it really means that this is just ideological. You know, ideologies are in so so many ways just uh, bunches of words. You know, vocabularies, and they speak different languages. Mm-hmm. This is a point that political philosopher Michael Oakeshott makes a lot. And uh, the, these people don't recognize the vocabulary, the very American vocabulary that Trump uses. So they they even use words, but, they, it, but they're hypocritical and ironic. You know, there were all these, Trump is a racist uh, signs in Scotland. One said, no Trump, no USA, no KKK, no racist USA. <laughs> In, in wait, wait, you know, maybe it rhymes better in Scottish, <laughs> and uh, or it has better meter. Uh, in in Scotland, one in three ethnic minorities last year reported discrimination. One in, now, why is that? First of all, there aren't that many ethnic minorities in Scotland, uh, but. The, the fact on the ground is uh, racial discrimination among those ethnic minorities is much worse in Scotland than in the United States. But the fact doesn't matter. They're just throwing whatever they can at Trump based on these slogans like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez there uh, being interviewed in the UK. Uh, there was a paraglider from Greenpeace. It said Trump well below par. Uh, this this one it was my favorite one of the whole protest because it, it had a hint of that British wit. Yeah, yeah. yeah it yeah. almost had, you know like well well jolly good. Right, right. <laughs> um, and then in London they had one of the biggest protests since the Iraq War. Really? Yeah. Since a, a matter that actually involved the United Kingdom, this one doesn't involve them at all. They still got a quarter of a million protesters out there. And it, this is a really funny point with how the, the media treat Donald Trump versus how they treat his opponents. Uh, the Lib Dem, Dem leader, Vince Cable, says that Trump is an enemy of the UK, says that he's hostile to the UK's interests and what they stand for. He's calling them an enemy. No coverage of that. No coverage of politicians in the United Kingdom referring to Trump as an enemy. Only uh, images and reporting of Donald Trump referring to Europeans as foes. That's but, what gets but, the... But you know, if you watch that full interview, the the reporter, this really got me because the reporter says to him, you know, you, you have, who are your main foes or competitors? So he uses, he uses them as synonyms. The right. question clearly is, the foe means competitor. And he says, well, we've got a lot of foes, you know, I mean, talking about competitors, you know, European or economic foes and the Chinese and all this stuff. It was a complete, mm-hmm. um, it was a complete bait and switch. Yeah, absolutely. That's of course right. You know, uh, Nigel Farage, uh, he, he referred to this. He, Nigel Farage is very good on the media, too. He points these things out. And uh, he, he said that this was the biggest insult to a sitting U.S. president ever. Hmm. Like in that like in that interview where they're just, you, you know, they're just trying to nab him on something. This was all just a big setup. And I think Trump handled it very well. I'll talk about it later on the show, how I, I think he handled the Russia summit well. Yeah. But in Helsinki, in Helsinki, there was a sign that reads, USA and Russia, you did not send your best. Your leaders have lots of problems. They're bringing crimes. Some of you, I assume, are good people in reference to the, the Trump's Mexico comments. <laughs> right, right. The, so in Helsinki, it's the protesters drawing an equivalence between uh, the U.S. and Russia. It's uh, tr- President Trump's critics on the left drawing an equivalence between the president of the United States and the president of Russia. They're drawing this equivalence. I think the way Trump does it is very different. But by the way, all of these signs in Finland, refugees welcome, no racism, no xenophobia. Last year, Finland accepted seven. 750 refugees from Syria <laughs> and uh, the, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, significantly lower, you might notice, than their neighbors. Last year, 5,000 Iraqi refugees returned home and Finland chartered them 15 flights a day. Uh, you know, if someone is going to be throwing stones here, we, we have over 1,000 illegal immigrants crossing our border every single day and we do basically nothing about it. Finland is sending them home on airplanes, making it so hard to live that they have to go home. It's, it's absurd, but they don't uh, you know, it, what's good for me is not good for thee with these protesters. And it just highlighted the hypocrisy. I think it was and, a great show. And it all goes back to the defense spending. It all goes back to the yep. defense spending because, you know, it's not just a matter of how much we spend on NATO. It is the fact that they don't have a military. They don't need to have a military that will protect them because mm-hmm. everybody knows if you invade Finland, we'll kill you. That's, you know, that is why people, the only reason Vladimir Putin 
doesn't take over Finland is because he doesn't want to start, start a war with us. So all our spending, yes. they benefit from all our spending. So everything they do is like a child yelling. It's like an adolescent child yeah. yelling at his parents. They're like, they, they really are like children who sit around and say like, you're not the boss of me. You know, where's my breakfast? Mom, I wanted my burger <laughs> yeah, rare. Exactly. Mom, I didn't. Yeah, it's so crazy. And it's so disingenuous. The left tries to say, well, certain countries aren't in NATO. Well, Finland doesn't directly. Nonsense. Yeah. The, as yeah. you said, the United States is protecting the world and they all benefit from our and, or, and rely upon and, our defense spending. And a simple thank you and politeness when our president comes to town is all we ask. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's exactly right. You yeah. know, but I, I think he played it really well. And uh, I mean, we'll see I, because I, I'm a little lighter on on President Kofefe for that uh, Russian meeting. <laughs> the Russian meeting. Yeah, it was just that one comment. I just thought like, you know, I know and I know, you know, so much of what he says is planned negotiation <laughs> technique. And, right. and and so the idea when you get people like the New York Times, this is treason. It's hilarious. It's right. hilarious. <laughs> Not treason. It's negotiation. But you do think every now and again, you are the president. Don't compare us to him. Right? John Brennan, the former CIA director, and, called And it, communist voter. Yeah. And communist yeah. voter. He said, yeah. this is treason with Russia. And, you know, the guy voted for the Communist <laughs> Party nominee at the height of the Cold War. <laughs> I know. I know. And I love, I, we haven't heard from Bernie because he was over there honeymooning. <laughs> yeah. While, yeah. the, while the gulags were operating. Bernie is starting to change his opinion on Trump. He's like, you know, this guy's looking better after all, isn't he? <laughs> all right, so you're going to get Trump off the hook. I'm uh, going to totally get him off the hook uh, on my show. I, I, I'll listen in because I want to know. I want to see I want to see that little magic trick. But, uh, <laughs> no, all right, it's good talking to you. I'll talk see you, Drew. All right. It is absolutely true. You know, we have to play this one. I, I just have to play this one clip of Trump, they say, calling Europe a foe. Which is is the uh, cut number six? Just listen to the way they manipulate this interview. This is ABC reporting on CBS's interview. Who's your biggest competitor? Your biggest foe globally right now? Well, I think we have a lot of foes. I think the European Union is a foe. What they do to us in trade. Now you wouldn't think of the European Union, but they're a foe. As for Putin's Russia, which U.S. intelligence agencies are convinced cyber attack the 2016 election, a half-hearted second place in the president's ranking of American foes. Russia's a foe in certain respects. Uh, China's a foe uh, economically. Certainly, uh, they're a foe. That's uh, completely absurd. Every piece of that is fake news. Every piece. He says, well, who's your biggest foe competitor? So he's using it as a synonym. So obviously when Trump picks it up, he's using it to mean competitor. That's the first thing. And secondly, he then lists them in the order they come into his mind. He wasn't saying that the European Union was a worse foe than Russia or China. He's been harping about China since he started his for 20 years, really, you know. So it's just complete fake news, complete noise. And it's the only good thing about it is it gets Trump, when Trump does make a little bit of a slip, which I think he did, it gets him off the hook because it's in the context of the just ceaseless, ceaseless and idiotic attacks against him.